Welcome to Electron Online. Now let's take a look at a beam that has several point loads and a distributed load. And what we're trying to do in each case is find the shear force and the moment at three different locations on the beam. Here they are at C, at D, and at E. Starting with the first one, notice at C, it's only two meters from the left side of the beam. Notice that the distributed load spans over a distance of six meters. So let's find the shear at location C. We can do that by saying the sum of all the forces in the y direction add up to zero. And so we have the reaction force at A, and notice also that I've already pre-calculated the reaction force at B and the reaction force at A by simply taking the pivot point at A and then summing up all the moments first caused by the distributed load, also by the two point loads right here. Notice that you take the total distributed load, which is 200 newtons per meter for 6 meters, which is 1200 newtons, times the average distance from the pivot point, that would be the midpoint right there, which is 3 meters. Then we take the 1000 newton force times 9 meters, because it's 9 meters away from 6 plus 3 from the pivot point, and then the 2000 newton force times 16 meters, because it's 16 meters away, and finally the reaction force at B at a distance of 20 meters from the pivot point right here. And then you can solve for force at B, and then by summing up all the force in the y direction, you can then also solve for the force at A. So now that we have that force, this is equal to a positive 1970 newtons minus the distributed load over distance of 2 meters, that's 200 newtons per meter times 2 meters, that would be 400 newtons. And uh, then we have plus V sub C, the shear force at C. And when we solve for that, we get V sub C is equal to, uh, let's see here, V sub C, that would be, oh, that's interesting. That would be minus 1970 newtons. When we bring this across, it becomes negative, plus 400 newtons. And it looks like we're going to have a negative shear force of a minus 1570 newtons. Notice that if the shear force is negative, that means it's acting in the opposite direction from the way the arrow is drawn. So it's actually acting upward. The second thing we need to calculate here is the moment at C, and we can do that by taking the sum of all the moments. And let's see, we're going to do that about this point right here. So we take the end of the beam where we want to find the moment, and so that would be at C. The sum of the moments at C, they must add up to zero. Let's see what all the moments are. First of all, we have this moment right here caused by the reaction force of A, which is a clockwise moment. That's negative 1970 newtons times a distance of 2 meters. And we have the distributed load, which is a total of 400 newtons. And that would be a, hmm, looks like a kind of clockwise moment that would be plus the total of 200 newtons per meter times 2 meter, which is 400 newtons. And the average distance, that would be that halfway point, would be 1 meter. And then we have the internal moment caused by the internal force on the beam counteracting the moment caused by the external forces. This would be a negative moment, so that would be minus m, oh, no, no sorry, it's a counterclockwise direction, which is a positive moment, so plus m sub c. And if we then solve for m sub c, we get m sub c is equal to, bringing this to the other side, that becomes positive, double that, that becomes 3,940 newton meters minus 400 newton meters. And when we subtract that, we get 3,440 newton meters. So that would be the moment at that particular point. Also the, that's the internal moment by the beam to counteract the external moment of the external forces. All right, now let's do the same thing, the shear force and the moment for this section right here. This is now the section going out to D, so we include the entire distributed load. So that's the sum of the forces in the y direction add up to zero, and that's how we find the shear at D. We have the force at A, which is a positive 1970 newtons, and we have a negative force, the total force of the distributed load, 200 newtons per meter times 6 meters, that's a minus 1200 newtons. And then we have to subtract from that because the distributed load, even though 
it's a positive quantity when it's acting downward, it's acting in a negative direction, so it's minus V at D. Solving for V at D is equal to this minus this, which is equal to 770 newtons. And to find the moment at D, we sum up all the moments at the end point, like right there, at D, and that should add up to zero. The first moment would be this force right here, clockwise moment, which is a negative, 1970 newtons. In this case, it's going to be multiplied times eight meters. And we have a counterclockwise moment by the distributive load, that would be a plus 1200 newtons, multiplied times the distance, the average distance would be at the three meter point from three to eight meters, that's a moment arm of five meters, and then we have the internal moment that would be plus MD, because it's pointing in a counterclockwise direction, which means that the moment at D is equal to, this moves to the other side, becomes positive, and I'm going to use a calculator for that. So eight times 1970, 1970, times 8 equals, that would be a positive 15,760 newton meters. And this goes to the other side, that would be minus 6,000 newton meters. And so the moment at D now becomes equal to minus 6,000, would be 9,760 newton meters. And finally, to the third section, now we're going to look for the shear force and the moment at this location, which is a distance of 12 meters from the end. So we sum up the forces in the y direction. Notice in this case, it also includes the 1,000 Newton force right here. And so the sum of the forces must add up to zero. F sub A, which is a positive 1970 Newtons. And then we have the distributed load acting downward. The total is minus 1,200 Newtons. And we have the 1,000 Newton force minus 1,000 Newtons. And now we have the, the shear force in a downward direction, so it's minus V at E. Solving for the shear at E, that is equal to, moving this to the other side becomes positive. That would be 1,970 minus 1,200 minus 1,000. So 1,970 minus 2,200. And we have a shear of minus 230 Newtons. And then we sum up all the moments about this point right there, so about point E. That should add up to zero. And what are all the moments now? Let's see here. We have a moment caused by this force right here. That would be a negative moment because it's a clockwise direction. That would be negative 1970 Newtons. We multiply that times a distance of 12 meters. And here we have a positive moment caused by the distributive load, 1,200 newtons, multiplied times a distance of 12 minus 3, which is 9 meters, and plus a 1,000 newtons times a distance of 9 minus 12, that, uh, 12 minus 9, which is 3 meters. And finally, we have the uh, moment plus m sub e, and that means that M sub E is equal to all these items move to the other side. So this becomes positive. So it's 1970 times 12. That would be a positive 23,640 newtons. That would be minus, that's uh, 10,800 newtons. So that would be 9,000. That would be 10,000, yep, that would be minus 10,800 and minus 3,000 newtons. Minus 3,000 newtons. And finally, that means that the moment at E would be equal to 9,840 newton meters. Of course, I have to multiply everything by meters to make it correct. All right, so we now found the shear and the moment at each of these three locations on a beam that has both point loads and distributed loads. So you can see how to go ahead and solve for those various things. And that's how it's done.